All right, Gingerbread Girl, part two. I think we mentioned this, but remember, the gingerbread man said something like, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man, something like that. So running is going to be a big part of her life now. After the death of the baby, I can't remember what the baby's name is, but she'll say it again here. M, was it M? No, M is our main character. I can't remember, but uh, she, in this part, she's going to talk to her dad because she just left her husband, and uh, we'll, we'll get into all that. Like her mom's, her mom's dead, and uh, then the the first glimpses of we gotta we gotta have a bad guy here or a bad person. So far, the big what would you say the big? I want to make sure this is clear. Uh, what would you say the big conflict is right now? It's probably. We could have a conversation about that. We could have a conversation about that, but um, the big conflict right now is probably M and herself, right? I mean, uh, she's not addicted to drugs. That's good. But the way she's coping with the death of her baby isn't exactly healthy either. And then you had Henry, who uh, really wasn't a problem, but it, it seems like their marriage was done. So... There's a little bit of conflict there. M versus herself. We got M and Henry a little bit. Um, nature. I mean, I guess the death of a baby, that's just a major uh, blow to her. Not really a conflict because it's, it's done. But the grief she's feeling, that's certainly not over. Now, I don't want to spoil too much that we're going to read here, but it's going to start getting better. There's a lot of exposition we got to get to, but... The setting is going to change, and the setting is going to be part of the problem. That's just all I'll say right now, okay? The setting, the change of the setting is going to be a problem. All right, let's get into this. Uh, this is a little bit of like part two. Remember, this is a short story. Uh, we might call this a novella, maybe. It's a, it's a really long, short story, I guess. It's maybe like 50 pages. So this might be a novella. That's in between a short story and a novel. This is probably a novella, probably, maybe a short story. There's no real clear like page number count or anything for these terms. So short story could be two pages, uh, could be like 50, 70 pages, just depends. Short, you might say, what, 70 pages isn't short. No, but compared to a novel, which might be like 200 pages, it is short. So that's how we get the Short story. All right, this is part two, chapter two, if you want. And it's, you sound like you might be crying. This is what her dad is going to say to her. Let me get rid of myself here. Let's do it. No, I, nah, that's too much of me. That's better. She wanted to buy some clothes. Eh, she wanted to buy some clothes. We're up here now. Every time, oh, every time I move this thing. Okay. She wanted to buy some clothes, a couple skirts, a couple shirts, two pairs of jeans, another pair of shorts. But before shopping, she had calls to make, one to Henry, one to her father. Her father was in Tallahassee. She decided she'd better call him first. She couldn't recall the number of his office phone in the motor pool, but had his cell phone number memorized. He answered on the first ring. She could hear engines revving in the background. So maybe he works with cars of some sort. M, how are you? That should have been a complex question, but wasn't. I'm fine, Dad, but I'm in the Morris Hotel. I guess I left Henry. Top of the next column. Permanently or just kind of a trial balloon? I don't know why he says trial balloon there. I've never heard that, but this is an older man. So maybe Stephen King is trying to get in some old folky kind of dialogue, but I've never heard that. So permanently or just kind of a, a trial balloon? He didn't sound surprised. He took things in stride. She loved that about him. But the sound of the revving motors first faded, then disappeared. She imagined him going into his office, closing the door, perhaps picking up the picture of her that stood on his cluttered desk. Mm, can't say yet. Right now, doesn't look too good. What was it about? Running. Running. She sighed. Not really. You know how sometimes a thing is about something else or a whole bunch of something else's? The baby. Her father had not called her Amy since the crib death. Now it was always just the baby. 
and the way I'm handling it, which is not the way Henry wants me to. It occurred to me that I'd like to handle things in my own way. Henry's a good man, her dad, her father said, but he has a way of seeing things, no doubt. She waited. What can I do? She told him. He agreed. She knew he would, but not until he heard her all the way out. The hearing out was the most important part, and Rusty Jackson was good at it. He hadn't risen from one of the three mechanics in the motor pool to maybe one of the four most important people at the Tallahassee campus. Um, hang on just a second. We should probably talk about this. Uh, there was a little clue. I mean, just like Stephen King's a great writer, so he will put in these little like clues to make things more believable. If you remember when we read yesterday, she was running and she had an FSU sweatshirt on, Florida State University. Well, her dad works at Florida State University. Massive campus. I mean, it's really like a big city in itself. I don't know how many people go to Florida State, but I know where I went to school, University of Alabama, Roll Tide, um, there, were, there are like 40,000 people that go to school there. So there's a lot of, you know, you'll always see like golf carts going around and there's buses. So if he's a mechanic at FSU, he probably has like a lot of cars to work on him. It seems like he kind of runs the place. So it's just like, you know, that's why she was wearing the shirt. Her dad works there, you know, just a little more believability. Maybe he gave it to her one day uh, when she came to visit him, or maybe he gave it to her as a gift or whatever. I don't, I don't think she went to school there. But he definitely works there. And the main campus of FSU is in Tallahassee, Florida. But she's not going to Tallahassee. She's going to a different part of Florida, an island, which is going to uh, be a bit of a complication for her. We will see. Why? Not, not now. Not now. Not today. All right. Where were we? We were somewhere here. What can I do? Uh, yeah. Top of this column right here. That's where we. And she hadn't heard it from him. He'd never say something like that to her or anyone else by not listening. So apparently some other people are talking about her dad, like, wow, your dad's pretty important around here or something like that. I'll send Mariette in to clean the house. He says, dad, you don't need to do that. I can clean. I want to. He says, total top to bottom is overdue. Damn place has been closed up for almost a year. I don't get down to Vermilion much since your mother died. Seems like I can always find some more to do up here. Em's mother was no longer Deborah to him either. Since the funeral, ovarian cancer, she was just your mother. Em almost said, you sure you don't mind this? But that was the kind of thing you said when a stranger offered you, offered to do you a favor or a different kind of father. You going to run there? He asked. Yeah, little joke, little joke there. That's kind of what broke her marriage up, sort of, with the running. You going to run there? He asked. She could hear a smile in his voice. There's plenty of beach to run on and a good long stretch of road, too, as you well know. And you won't have to elbow people out of your way. Between now and October, Vermillion is as quiet as it ever gets. Okay, that's going to be a problem. Not a lot of people around. I'm going there to think and I guess to finish mourning. Mourning, you know, right there, the way that's spelled. It's not like the first part of the day. That means getting over something bad, usually a death. So she's going to mourn for a little while, trying to get over uh, Amy. That's the baby's name. Yeah, we just read that. It's all right then, he says. You want me to book your flight? I can do that. Sure you can. Emmy, are you okay? Yes, she said. You sound like you might be crying. Top of the next column. A little bit, she says, and wiped her face. It all happened very fast. Like Amy's death, she could have added. She, th this is super sad to me when I read this. Every time I read this, I get a little, a little choked up in my throat here. She'd done it like a little lady. Never a peep from the baby monitor. Leave quietly. Don't slam the door. Em's own mother often said when Em was a teenager. I don't know why that gets me uh, every time, but I also... I don't know if you have like certain books, probably not. Hopefully you're a reader. Um, certain books or certain movies where just like a line will stick with you. And uh, this comes up in my life every so often. I'll think I'll think of that. Like, you know, 
she, she, you know, she went quietly or whatever. Just a oh, heartbreaking little baby. I mean, come on. Isn't that one thing we can agree on? Like, I don't know. Some people like dogs. Some don't. Some people like cats. Some don't. But I mean, like a little innocent baby. Yeah. I know they cry a lot and stuff, but they're just completely innocent. And so when I see like stories of, um, you know, Ukraine, we're talking about that quite a bit. It's just like, I mean, it's one thing for the adults to have to, you know, go into bomb shelters or pick up guns and start fighting. It's, a, it's another thing when innocent children and babies are, are caught up in this. It's just uh, heart wrenching. I do not like to see those pictures. But anyways, the, you know, the Amy, the death is totally different from uh, Ukraine, but just my heart goes out to all the, the, all the people suffering there, especially the kids. All right, back to this, back to a little more happier stuff. Well, no, this isn't exactly happy. All right. So right there, Henry won't come there to the hotel and bother you, will he? She heard a faint, delicate hesitation before he chose bother. And smiled in spite of her tears, which had pretty well run their course anyway. If you're asking if he's going to come and beat me up, that's not his style. Man sometimes finds a, a different style when his wife up and leaves him, just takes off running. Not Henry, she said. He's not a man to cause trouble. You sure you don't want... Sorry. You sure you don't want to come to Tallahassee first? She hesitated. Part of her did. But... I need a little time the, on my own before anything else, she repeated. All this happened very fast. Although she suspected it had been building for quite some time, it might have been in the DNA of their marriage. All right. Love you, Emmy. Love you too, Dad. Thank you. She swallowed so much. All right. Um, this took me quite a few times. Remember, I've taught this a few times, read this with a few other classes, but I want to focus on that highlighted. You probably can't see it. Let me make it a little bigger. That highlighted part there. It might have even been in the DNA of their marriage. Now I probably read this uh, three or four times, maybe more before they like that line. I felt like that's kind of important. I'll read it one more time and then I'll pause this. Um, I mean, this is like an inference within an inference. Like it's really kind of deep down in there, but it might have even been in the DNA of their marriage. All right. Take a second. What does that mean? Okay. And there might be a line later on that helps connect this, which so this might be an incredibly hard question, but let's just think about it for a second. Um, or maybe did we already read that? Um where M says that she produced a defective baby. So the fact that they're breaking up, they're, they're getting divorced. I mean, she's saying it, the DNA. So the baby, she's, she's kind of saying like the baby might, there's a reason the baby died. Maybe because Henry and myself, M, we're not ready. We're not meant for each other. Like the fact that our DNA came together and produced a defective baby. Like, it, I think it's pretty profound. Like, whoa, wow. So obviously that's not true, but I can't imagine what a parent goes through after leaving, after losing a child like that. So she's probably rethinking everything. Like, is this nature's way of telling me that I shouldn't be with this guy? You know, whatever. I, I can't imagine what goes through her head or anybody's head like that. So uh, a little bit deep there. But, I mean, sometimes, I mean, Stephen King is such a great writer. It wouldn't surprise me that he put in a line like that to kind of make you think, stop and think. I mean, that's, I mean, I, I do think he's one of the best writers writing now. And he's getting, he's getting up there in age. I think he's like close to 80 or 75 at least, something like that. I'll look it up uh, later and we can maybe talk about it. But he's still producing a lot, uh, like one or two books a year, which is pretty amazing. All right, let's get back to this for a couple more minutes. Uh, so that was like the first uh, maybe glimpse of like, uh-oh, is Henry going? Was, her dad said it. Sometimes a man changes after his wife up and leaves. Maybe Henry's going to be the bad guy. Maybe he's going to change. She did, she did compare him to a sheep, I think, wasn't it? A Dorset gray sheep. 
you know, I don't think sheep could, could a sheep, a sheep could, could kill a person, right? That's what she compared him to. Stephen King, you know, he's always like, there's a reason he compared him to a sheep. You can imagine, you know, you know, sheep don't really do much. So probably Henry won't do anything, right? But there's, put in the back of your mind, is Henry going to follow her down to Vermilion Key? That's the name of the island. Only one way in, one way out. We'll find that out. Not a lot of people around. If there's trouble, she could be a, a sitting duck. I don't know. Uh, where do we lend off here? All right. Love you too. Love you too, Dad. Yeah, we read that. All right. Maybe this is a good place actually for us to stop. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, about 15 minutes in, almost 16 minutes. Lots of discussing. Um, any final thoughts before we move on to probably more Ukraine stuff? Maybe for the last day. I don't know, maybe one or two more days. But just want you to know a little bit about this conflict that could be affecting us. with Prices of gas and everything. If, if gas prices go up even more, everything goes up really because uh, we, we, repl we rely so much on trucks to get us what we need. And trucks run on gas. All right. And uh, lots of stuff to talk about with Ukraine. Okay. 